Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Oguntade, coming to you live and direct from New Orleans, Louisiana, the Big Easy. Dirty South, the 504 French Quarter, I am in the building, French Quarter, I am in the building, French Quarter, New Orleans, I am here, dirty, dirty. Brothers and sisters, reports are coming out that the CNN, Caucasian News Network, has denied all black media outlets the right to cover tonight's presidential debate. I'm getting this message from brothers and sisters all over the country that the Caucasian News Network is not letting any black media outlets cover the presidential debate tonight. I want to know why are you surprised? I want to know why are you appalled? I want to know why would you think anything else would have happened? We are disorganized. We fight more with each other than we do with our enemies. We have no economic program for ourselves at all. We never focus on um, uplifting our brothers and sisters on the bottom. We have been used as a political football by the Democratic Party for almost 100 years straight without any change of behavior. Why would anyone take the American Negro seriously? CNN didn't let any black reporters in because black reporters don't matter to them. And do you know why black reporters don't matter to them? Because black people are going to vote for the Democrats anyway. So why do we have to cater to black votes when we already know where the black vote is going? And since no one in America cares about black people, why do we need their reporters? I mean, who cares what black people think about the presidential election? Who cares what black people think about the presidential debate? So they're not going to let them in. 99% of all the black reporters are going to be Democrats. So that's the Republicans way of saying we don't need you. And the Democrats don't care because they have nothing on their agenda for you in the next election cycle. They're focusing on immigrants, rainbow gangers. And women. So CNN not letting any of the black media outlets cover tonight's presidential debate, that's just a symbol of a much bigger problem on the horizon. That's just a symbol of a much bigger problem on the horizon. We're dealing with a blackout, a literal blackout of anything relevant for black people being handled, processed or heard by the white power structure or the U.S. government. It's over for us. If we don't quickly come to a realization of the state of emergency we are in as a race of people, you can forget it. You can forget it. See, some people thought we were going to wake up at the Hurricane Katrina. Some people thought we were going to wake up at the Hurricane Katrina. Some people thought we were going to wake up after Hurricane Katrina. We went back to sleep. Some people thought we would wake up after George Floyd. We went back to sleep. You wonder why we are a reactionary people? Why do we always react to what the government does? We react to what the police do. We react to what white people do. Why are black people so reactionary? You know why? We're only energized to make a difference when white people piss us off. If white people are not pissing us off, we could care less about what happens to black people. We are completely reactionary. Caucasians control black people's entire agenda list. We only react to racism. We do not proactively do anything for ourselves. And the reason we don't proactively do anything for ourselves is we don't have enough love to do anything for ourselves. So y'all can stop with all the religious talk. I'm so tired of the religious talk. Black people are a bunch of spiritual hypocrites. 
We are a bunch of spiritual hypocrites. How can you be so committed to God doing nothing about your people's condition? You're a hypocrite. You're so committed to the church, so committed to the masjid, so committed to the temple. But yet you're completely comfortable with your people struggling and suffering spiritual hypocrisy. Spiritual hypocrisy. I will watch Bronny James play when he drops the snow bunny. I don't support black men who date out the race. So until Bronny James stops bunny hopping, I can't do it. I'm happy for him and his father, though. I love to see that black father, black son together on the basketball court. That's going to be great. That's going to be great. I love to see that. That father, the LeBron James is a great father. He's no activist at all. That's the biggest lie ever told. He's no activist at all, but he's a tremendous father. And I look forward to him and Bronny James playing on the court together. If Bronny James stops bunny hopping, if he doesn't stop bunny hopping, I can't support that. But let's talk about more important matters right now. Let's talk about more important matters right now. Let's talk about more important matters right now. Tonight's presidential debate is going to be interesting because I want to see whether or not black people's issues are addressed at all. I suspect Donald Trump might throw you all a pig bone. I think Donald Trump might throw the American Negro a pig bone. I think he's going to bring you up because he knows Joe Biden hasn't done anything for you. So Donald Trump might cater to the Negro ego just enough to get your vote. I do suspect that former President Trump might throw you a pig's feet bone. He might throw the American Negro a pig's feet bone because he knows Joe Biden is very weak on the black agenda. He's completely ignored you for four years. And so I can see Donald Trump saying something on behalf of black folks, not because he cares, but just to get your vote. But I really don't think you're going to be a topic tonight. I really don't think you are going to be a topic tonight because you are very comfortable being politically irrelevant. We have been politically irrelevant for quite some time, and especially since the election of Barack Hussein Obama. So since black people like being politically irrelevant, I really don't think your issues are going to be broadcast too much tonight. OK. But this is just the beginning. Y'all, you have seen nothing yet. This is just the beginning. And let me be honest with y'all. I don't want to rain on your integrationist parade. I don't want to rain on your assimilationist parade. But let me say this to you, brothers and sisters. Once there are enough migrants in the black community. Once there are enough immigrants in the black community. Once they have finished destroying black political power by separating us from each other with our voluntary permission. I believe that the government is going to empower these immigrant groups to start physically attacking African people. I hope you're listening to me. This is not a game. This is not a joke. This is not funny. Once there are enough migrants in this country, you're going to start seeing immigrant attacks on American blacks. It's coming. We are about to repeat our history in America. The only difference is it won't be white people inflicting the violence. It's going to be their weaponized immigrants. You're going to repeat your history in this country, but only this time it won't be Caucasians carrying out the brutality. It's going to be immigrants carrying out the brutality. Oh, yes, it's coming. It's coming because as far as America goes, we are an unnecessary, unneeded population of useless eaters. And on top of that, we keep on talking about reparations, which is a stain on America's reputation because we keep on reminding her about the debt she owes to the enslaved African. So this government has come to the conclusion that it will be better off without you. This country has made up its mind that it will be better off without you. And that's why they are gentrifying 
and bringing migrants in all over the country. New York and Chicago are just the most exaggerated campaigns of forced ethnic cleansing of American blacks, but they're slowly doing it all over the country. While you sitting around waiting for reparations, they are physically diluting your strength, mass incarcerating your men. They have normalized black femicide and infant mortality and maternity death. Do, have you realized that there's nothing functional about the black community? There's nothing at all functional about the black community. What's functional in our community? The black church does nothing for the black community. It's dysfunctional. Gangster rap and hip hop does nothing for the black community. It's dysfunctional. The black businesses do nothing for the black community but rob it and take their wealth back to a white suburb where they live, completely dysfunctional. Fraternities and sororities don't do anything for the black community. They're dysfunctional. What is functional in the black community? I know. You functionally use your paycheck to empower people in other communities while you splurge on useless material garbage. That's the only thing functional. You functionally deprive your community of your money while you give it to other people and they take your spending power and they translate it into political weaponization against the black community. We literally finance our own gentrification. We literally finance our own political subjugation. We literally finance our own economic retardation. We keep on having history conferences. We keep on having history conferences. History is important. I love studying history. I will be the black history teacher at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. I will be the black history teacher at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. I will be the black history teacher at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. But what good is studying your history when you haven't taken care of your future? What good is studying your history if you haven't taken care of your future? What good is studying your history and you're not taking care of your future? Black people never talk about the future. We have no agenda, no plan, no program except to wait on God and wait on the white man. What kind of a racial agenda is that? Waiting for the elections is waiting on the white man. Waiting for reparations is waiting for the white man. And many of you pray to a white Jesus, so waiting on God is also waiting for a white man. Somebody said we was here 200 years before the white people. Okay, and what problem did that just solve? Here we go again. Historical masturbation. We were here 200 years before the white man. We were actually here more than 200 years before Kukulkan. The African had already transmigrated every continent. But what problem did that solve? You a Chickasaw, Choctaw, Indian. What problem did that solve? There's aliens that are visiting the planet Earth. What problem did that solve? There's people living under the Earth. What problem did that solve? See, the problem with the American Negro is you need to be constantly entertained. You're the most childish people in the country, extremely childish. If you're not being entertained, you cannot tackle serious problems. If you are not being entertained, you cannot tackle serious problems. This is why whenever you want to organize American Negroes, you got to give them entertainment or food. If there's no food or entertainment, they're not coming. No other group has to feed and entertain their people in order to keep their attention. No other group has to feed or entertain their people in order to keep their attention. But you have to do that with the American Negro because we're not serious enough. 
We are not serious enough to stay focused without food and entertainment. This is why the politicians use rappers to push their campaign. Only in the black community are entertainers used to get out the vote. You don't see that in other communities. You might see an entertainer here or an entertainer there. You don't see Chinese comedians and Chinese basketball players being used to attract the Chinese vote. That only works with black people because we are not serious. Don't tell me to go easy. I'm not going easy on the people. We're being marked for genocide, extermination, political, economic suffocation, and you're telling me to go easy? Do you go easy in the weave store? Do you go easy in Foot Locker? Do you go easy at the jewelry store? Do you go easy in the white restaurant? Do you go easy when you prepare for your children's proms? Do you go easy on the cruise? Do you go easy on vacation? But when I'm talking about the reconstruction of black America, you want me to go easy. You know why? Because you're not serious. We are not a serious people, and that's why nobody takes us seriously. That's why nobody takes us seriously. There's only one question that matters. How long will it take you to weaponize your money to save your children's future? That's the only question that matters. I don't want to hear about a government grant. I don't want to hear about a white bank loan. I don't want to hear about any of that. What are you going to do with what you have? That's the only question. We always looking for grants. No. If you think the government is going to help you when the government created all your problems, what drug are you taking? What drug are you taking? I don't see no hospitals being built. Where the hospital? Be? Can somebody show me an independent black hospital being built anywhere in black America? Can somebody show me an independent black hospital where black people have come together to safeguard their health by creating their own hospital? What about an independent black clinic in America? Do we have an independent black clinic looking out for our babies, looking out for our elders, looking out for our disabled citizens? Do we have a hospital or clinic in the works at all? And y'all talking about Bronnie James. And y'all talking about Bronnie James. I'm happy for Bronnie James. I want to see LeBron and his son on the court together. But Snow Bunny Bronny James isn't going to solve your problems. Snow Bunny Bronny James isn't going to solve your problems. He's just a child. You have to solve your problems and stop looking for distractions. Stop looking for distractions. Stop looking for distractions. Stop looking for distractions. How many independent schools are we working on right now? How many independent schools are we working on right now? Let's go to whole food markets owned by Africans. Black whole foods markets. How many of them are we working on to feed our people real food? Nutrition and diet, major causes of disease. Nutrition and diet, major problems and causes of disease in the black community. Is there any conference coming up to build whole food markets owned by the black community? Can I go to that conference? Can somebody send me the flyer for that? Where is that conference at? I don't want to go to another conference on King Tut. I don't want to go to another conference on Nile Valley history. Where is the damn conferences to create a future for African children. Where's that conference at? What about an independent black bank? And I'm not talking about so I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about superficial black banks that are financed by white banks. I'm talking about real black banks from top to bottom. Where are they at? Funding businesses in the black community. Where are they? Don't talk about Jay-Z. 
You're trying to scapegoat him. This is not about Jay-Z. This is not about any black billionaire. We are a $2 trillion people. Stop scapegoating celebrities. We are a $2 trillion people. Stop scapegoating celebrities. We are a $2 trillion people. Stop scapegoating celebrities. What are we going to do on the street? The grassroots we need systemic transformation. Stop looking for superheroes to save you. That's your problem. Jesus is a superhero. The big problem with black folks is we're waiting for a superhero because we want no part of the responsibility to save ourselves. We're always looking for a superhero. Whether they come out the Bible, whether they come out the Quran, whether they come out the Torah, we're always looking for a superhero to save black folks. No, 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 no. Black people will not be saved.